little fox. Wacky Ricky, Episode Two: Getting Ready for Christmas. Mom, where can I put this? Put it on the Christmas tree. Look at me! I'm a Christmas tree. Be careful. Finally, it is finished. Ricky, plug in the lights. Okay, Dad. Here it goes. Wow, they look beautiful. Ricky, Rachel, did you write to Santa? Not yet, Dad. I want to email Santa. Me too. Don't copy me, Rachel. Ricky, be nice. Help Rachel use the computer. Dear Santa, I want a flying hat, a giant power robot, and a bike. That's too much, Ricky. Don't bother me. Wait a minute. What do you want for Christmas? I want a doll and a dress and a tea set and a scarf and. Slow down! You are talking too fast. A hat. That's everything. And finally, Santa at NorthPole dot org. Send. Wacky Ricky, Episode Three, Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Ricky. Merry Christmas, Rachel. Can we open our presents? No, we can't. I have an idea. Let's make breakfast. That sounds fun. Ricky, we don't know how to cook. Don't worry. We can use the toaster and the microwave. Oh no, the toast is burning. Ah! Ricky, the microwave. It's six o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? We are making breakfast. Sorry, mom. Me too. Sorry. That's okay. Let's open the presents first. Hooray! This one is for you, Ricky. Here's one for you, Rachel. Wow, I like it. It's the doll I wanted. <laughs> This, This is, is for you, you Mom, Mom and Dad. Dad. Thank you. They are beautiful. Merry Christmas, everyone. Phonic Kid Central. A giant wreath for Christmas. By the time Nina got to Kids Central, everyone was already hula hooping. Are we having another hula hoop day? Nina asked excitedly. Where's Izzy? Izzy wasn't feeling well, so she stayed home from school today. Miss Shelley told Nina. And we are using hula hoops again, but in a different way. Nina took off her backpack and sat down between Bobby and Ethan. 
She smiled at Jason, who was sitting across from her. It's almost holiday season. Did any of you decorate your houses yet? Miss Shelley asked. We put Christmas lights in our front yard, Nina said. We put candles in our menorah, Jason said. We put up a Christmas tree with lights, Ethan said. Aren't lights and candles a pretty way to spread holiday spirit? My favorite decoration is a wreath of lights, Miss Shelley said. She showed them a photo of a bright white wreath. It was made of lights. Oh, I wish we had a wreath like that in here, Nina whispered. We will have a wreath like that after today, Miss Shelley said. Miss Shelley rolled out the biggest hula hoop Nina had ever seen. Too bad Izzy isn't here to see this, Nina said. Is that going to be our wreath? Bobby asked. Yes. We'll wrap lights around it, Miss Shelley said. Miss Shelley opened a box and pulled out a string of lights. Tape one end to the hula hoop. Wrap the rest of the string around the hoop. When you're done, connect it to another string and keep going. Everyone worked hard wrapping lights around the hoop. Finally, the boxes of lights were empty. I can't even see the hula hoop anymore, Nina said. Let's plug in our wreath, Miss Shelley said. Wow! The kids all cried together. I bet you can see it from outer space, Bobby said. Why are the lights out in here? Miss Falani stuck her head in the door. Is everything okay? Then Miss Falani noticed the wreath. That's beautiful. Is this the work of Kids Central? She asked. Yep. Nina nodded proudly. Miss Shelley looked proud, too. I know a great spot for that wreath, Miss Falani said. On the front of our school. What do you think? The principal looked at Nina, Bobby, Ethan, and Jason. Ethan grinned. I think it's a great idea. So do I. Jason agreed. Hey, aren't you missing somebody? Miss Falani asked. Izzy stayed home sick today, Nina said. But I bet she would say it's a good idea, too. The kids carried the wreath out the front door. Miss Shelley plugged it in. The warm glow of the lights reflected off the snowy ground. Nina couldn't wait to show the wreath to Izzy tomorrow. Speedy and Boomer's New Job It was Christmas Eve. Speedy and Boomer were about to start their new job. The two reindeer looked around the warehouse. They saw a huge, pretty sleigh. Colorful presents filled tall shelves. Elves scurried around everywhere. Hey there, said a friendly voice. Speedy and Boomer turned around. I'm Rudolph, said a reindeer with a shiny red nose. I'm the reindeer in charge. Our job tonight is to pull that sleigh through the air. That sounds easy, said Boomer. Rudolph nodded. It's not hard. But our boss, Santa, has lots of stops to make. We'll stop at millions of houses all over the world. Whoa! Speedy gasped. <gasps> One night isn't enough 
enough time. Don't worry, said Rudolph. We will have 24 hours of night. Huh? said Boomer. How is that possible? Rudolph led Boomer and Speedy to a giant map. Earth is divided into 24 time zones, said Rudolph. Because there are 24 hours in one day? asked Speedy. Right, said Rudolph. The sun only shines on one side of Earth at a time. So it's always daytime in some places and nighttime in others. Let me show you. Rudolph pressed a button. A big part of the map went dark. When it's 11 p.m. in Japan, it's only 11 a.m. in Argentina, Rudolph said. Argentina's time is 12 hours behind Japan's. He pressed another button. A zigzag line appeared. This is the international date line, said Rudolph. Each day starts here. We'll start at this line and fly west. How long will we spend in each time zone? Asked Speedy. One hour. Then we'll move west to the next time zone, said Rudolph. Oh, the time will be one hour earlier there, said Boomer. Exactly, said Rudolph. We should get ready. We have 24 time zones to visit. That's a lot of flying, said Boomer. I'm going to get hungry. Many children leave treats for us, said Rudolph. But watch out, the boss usually eats them all. <laughs> when is it Christmas? It feels like Christmas when we get cold and frosty. It seems like Christmas when we mail our holiday cards. It sparkles like Christmas when we light the tree. It tastes like Christmas when we lick candy canes. It smells like Christmas when we bake cookies. It looks like Christmas when we hang our stockings. It sounds like Christmas when we sing carols. When we open our presents, <laughs> it is Christmas. A Christmas Carol, Part 1 Late in the afternoon one Christmas Eve, Ebenezer Scrooge and his clerk Bob Cratchit were hard at work. Ebenezer Scrooge was perhaps the cheapest, most cold-hearted, mean-spirited man that ever lived. He had no friends. On the street, not even the beggars would beg from him. Cratchit was a good and honest man, but working for Scrooge had kept his family poor. Cratchit was working as hard as he could, but it was difficult because Scrooge kept the office terribly cold. He was too cheap even to buy coal. Suddenly, they heard a cheerful cry. Merry Christmas, Uncle! It was Scrooge's nephew. Being surprised, being interrupted, and hearing the words, Merry Christmas, all angered Scrooge. Ah, humbug! He replied. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? His nephew laughed. Christmas is for fools who waste their money, grunted Scrooge. There is no profit! To this, his nephew replied. Christmas is a time to remember the birth of Jesus and to be kind, forgiving, loving, and pleasant to others. 
it is a time to know that all people are brothers and sisters. While it may not bring me profit, I say God bless Christmas. Bah humbug! Scrooge replied. With a smile, his nephew asked, Would you at least come to dinner with us tomorrow? No, I will not. Now, good afternoon, snorted Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Uncle, replied his nephew with a smile. With that, his nephew left, and two gentlemen walked in. Mr. Scrooge, we are taking a Christmas collection for the poor, said one of the gentlemen. Many have little or nothing to live on. To this, Scrooge replied, Are there no prisons or workhouses? Mr. Scrooge, most people would rather die than go to those terrible places, replied the gentleman. If they would rather die, then fine, declared Scrooge. Let them die. I will not waste my money on helping people who are lazy. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Shocked and disgusted, the men quickly left. Then, looking at his watch, Scrooge realized that it was time to close the office. I guess you want tomorrow off, said Scrooge with a sigh. It is Christmas, sir, replied Cratchit. Bah, humbug! It is a poor excuse, said Scrooge. You'd better be here very early the next day. With that, the office was locked, and Scrooge went home to his dreary, lonely house. Scrooge once had a partner named Jacob Marley, but on Christmas Eve, seven years before, Marley had died. Marley and Scrooge were similar in that they both had no friends, no family, and no hearts. Scrooge was the only one at Marley's funeral, and even he was not very sad. In fact, shortly after Marley died, Scrooge completely stopped thinking about him. That is why it was quite strange that, when Scrooge arrived at his house, the old knocker on his front door turned into the living face of Jacob Marley. Startled, Scrooge looked again and saw just a knocker. Poo poo, said Scrooge, thinking that he was acting silly. Without another thought, he entered and sat by a very low fire. Suddenly, an old servant bell next to the fireplace began to ring loudly, giving Scrooge a shock. This was followed by a terrible noise, and then, through the locked door, came a ghost. What do you want? declared Scrooge, trying to sound stern. Much, said the ghost. Who are you? asked Scrooge. Who was I? replied the ghost. I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Listen carefully, Ebenezer, said Marley sternly. In life, everyone must love others and help those in need. If not, after death, he is condemned to search the earth. I spent my entire life in our office counting money, and I never knew love or charity. Now I must wander the earth, trying to make up for my selfish life, but it is too late. I see a poor woman with no food for her babies. I want to give her some money, but I can't. I must sit and watch her suffer. Scrooge began to shake with fear because he knew he was the same. I am here tonight to help save you from my fate, said Marley. Thank you, replied Scrooge. You were always a good friend. You will be haunted by three ghosts, said Marley. They will come to you in your sleep. Ghosts? I want no more ghosts, replied Scrooge. Marley repeated, They are your only chance to escape my pain. The ghosts will come. With that, the ghost of Marley left. Exhausted from the terrible fright and not knowing what was true, Scrooge climbed into bed and went to sleep. A Christmas Carol, Part 2 
Scrooge awoke to a bright light. In front of him was a strange old man. In some ways he looked ancient, but he had young childlike features and was dressed in summer flowers. Are you the first ghost that Marley predicted? asked Scrooge. Yes, I am the ghost of Christmas past, replied the ghost. Tonight you will see images of your past, but they will have no awareness of us. Come with me. The ghost kindly took Scrooge's hand and walked into the past. Scrooge could hear his old employer, Mr. Fezziwig, yelling out, Ebenezer, Dick, come here, boys. No more work for today. It's Christmas Eve. Give me a hand and let's clear away the desks for a party. Old Scrooge could not believe how young and happy he used to look. Well, it was a grand party. Mrs. Fezziwig, the cook, and the maid came in with food and drinks for everyone. Then the rest of the men and women who worked for the company were invited. They had a dance and a feast. Scrooge danced with the prettiest girl all night. Old Scrooge shed a tear as he remembered the happy old days. We must move on, said the ghost of Christmas past. Can't I just have a few more minutes? pleaded Scrooge. I'm sorry, replied the ghost. Then Scrooge saw himself a little older, sitting with the girl who he had danced with. Crying, she said, You have another love now. No, replied Scrooge. You are the only woman. It's not a woman you love. It's gold you love, she said. So, go to your true love. Angrily, old Scrooge shouted, Get me out of this place! Take me back! The ghost nodded, and Scrooge was again sleeping in his bed. But it seemed only minutes later that Scrooge was awoken by a bright light from his living room. In the room, a fire was burning brightly. Sitting by the fire was a jolly ghost, eating meat and drinking wine. Come join me, he called. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Lead me, spirit, said Scrooge. Tonight I have learned many things. I'm sure you will teach me more. Touch my robe, replied the ghost. Immediately, Scrooge and the ghost left the house and were standing in Bob Cratchit's tiny living room. Scrooge counted four children. How does Bob feed them all on his salary? Scrooge wondered aloud. Mrs. Cratchit was dressed in a poor and simple dress. But she had a smile as she cooked the Christmas turkey, prepared the gravy, and dished out the applesauce. Where is your father? she asked. Church should be finished by now. Here he comes! shouted four children at once. In came Bob Cratchit carrying Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim was very sick, and his legs never did work. But Bob loved him because he had a gentle heart. Soon all seven were seated and ready to eat. Scrooge had never seen such a warm and loving sight. Even though their clothes were nearly rags and their house was humble, it was the most handsome family Scrooge had ever seen. At the end of the meal, Bob raised his glass, saying, A Merry Christmas to all of us! God bless us! Then Tiny Tim repeated, God bless everyone! Surprising Scrooge, Bob said, To Mr. Scrooge, who gave us the money for this meal. Mr. Scrooge? No, replied his wife. He gives us almost nothing. Bob looked sternly at his wife and said, It's Christmas. Fine, said his wife more politely. To Mr. Scrooge. At that, the ghost touched Scrooge and they were in another house. He could hear the laughter of his nephew. <laughs> he said that Christmas was a humbug, cried Scrooge's nephew. Shame on him, declared his pretty wife. How terrible of him to be rude to you when you are trying to be kind to him. <laughs> 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 
Well, it only hurts him, replied Scrooge's nephew. Here we sit with each other in good food, and he is in his lonely house. I feel sorry for him. Well, don't, exclaimed his wife. Bah humbug to him! And they laughed. Even old Scrooge laughed. He was a humbug, but he would change. Then the scene faded, and the ghost of Christmas Present flew him all over the city. They went to hospitals and workhouses and saw children suffering. In the streets, they saw men and women freezing, but in the jails, they saw the worst misery of all. A Christmas Carol, Part Three. Then the jolly ghost vanished, and a cold, dark creature in a black hood came toward Scrooge. Unlike the other ghosts, this one was not friendly. In fact, he had the look of death. You must be the ghost of Christmas Future, inquired Scrooge. But the ghost said nothing. Pointing his bony finger, the ghost led Scrooge to a group of businessmen. I heard he died last night. Said one man. I wonder who will get his money. Joked another man. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. Said the first man, and he walked off. Why are you showing me this? Asked Scrooge. But still, the black ghost said nothing. Then they went to a group of servants. Since he's dead, he doesn't need this. Quick, let's each take something. Declared one maid, "He doesn't have any friends to claim his things." She continued, "We worked in his miserable house, so we earned it." Said another. Scrooge watched in disgust as the servants divided silver spoons and other expensive things among themselves. Scrooge turned to the ghost, saying, "I see." This could be me if I do not change. The ghost of Christmas Future took Scrooge to Bob Cratchit's house. This time, there was less joy there. Did you visit Tiny Tim today, Father? Asked one of the children sadly. Yes, and I brought some flowers for his grave. He replied. It is beautiful there, said Bob with a tear. For the first time ever, Scrooge felt true sorrow in his heart. Poor Bob, he thought. He did love that boy. Then, leaving that scene, Scrooge and the ghost traveled to a dreary graveyard. The spirit brought him to a grave where a coffin was being placed. There was no one there except a workman. Before Scrooge would look at the name on the new gravestone, he asked the ghost, "Spirit, tell me this: Are these the things that will be, or the things that might be?" The ghost made no response. Scrooge continued, "But if a man changes, then surely his future changes, right? If not, why would you visit me?" The ghost pointed to the grave. There on the gravestone was his name, Ebenezer Scrooge. With a loud cry, Scrooge declared, "This is not I. I am not this lonely man." No! I will honor Christmas in my heart, and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. I will love others and help the poor. Please. Give me another chance," pleaded Scrooge. At that, the dark ghost faded away in a puff of smoke. Scrooge found himself back in his bedroom. It was a bright, crisp morning. He was alive and a completely new man. He opened his window and shouted to a boy walking along the street, "My good boy, what day is it today? Why, it is Christmas!" Replied the puzzled boy. Excellent! Shouted Scrooge. I haven't missed it, my good boy. Do you know the shop that has the very big turkey in its window? Asked Scrooge. 
Of course, responded the boy. An intelligent boy. Go and buy it and bring it here, said Scrooge. Come back in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. The boy was off like a shot. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's, laughed Scrooge. <laughs> he would know who sent it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Then Scrooge dressed himself in his best clothes and went to visit his nephew. Before he could change his mind, he ran up and knocked on the door. Uncle Scrooge? said his nephew with great surprise. If you are willing to have me, I'd like to dine with you tonight, said Scrooge. Scrooge's nephew almost shook his hand off because he was so pleased. Never did Scrooge have so much fun as he did that day. He ate and talked like he had never done before. After that Christmas day, Scrooge became a different man. To Bob Cratchit, he became a wonderful employer. Bob's family suffered no more, and Scrooge provided money to help Tiny Tim, who did not die. In the city, he became known for his kindness and friendship. He put his money toward work to help the poor and suffering. He never saw the ghosts again. From that day on, it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well. May that be said of all of us. And as Tiny Tim said, God bless everyone. Christmas is coming. We hang. We shop. We wrap. We share. We bake. We eat. We sing. We speak Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Dad puts up the tree. I put on the candy canes. Dad puts on the lights. I put on the ornaments. Dad puts on the angel. I put on the star. Santa puts the presents under the tree. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Fox.